a God you cannot see if you were Horatio Spafford. Could you say, when good times come, when bad times come, it's well with my soul. Take my family away from me, it's well with my soul. Because I know one of these days I'm going to see and I'll understand. The rest of the story, as I've told some of you before, is that Horatio and Anna had a total of eight children. Seven of them did not make it to be adults. One survived them. He was an elder in a church, a Presbyterian church in Chicago. Those folks finally decided, you know, there, there must be something going on in this family that God's not happy with because all this bad stuff that happens. They finally churched them, as we used to say. They went over to what was then called Palestine. Today we call it Israel. And they started a mission over there. And that mission survives to this day. Because even when terrible things happened, Horatio Spafford could say, it's well with my soul. I don't know what kind of faith that takes, but he had it. You know, even the people who were close to Jesus didn't always have the kind of faith they needed. I mean, think about Peter. How many times did Jesus have to get on to Peter? And he's right there with Jesus. You know, he's sinking and Jesus says, oh, you have little faith and lifts him up out of the water. You know, he, Jesus says to him, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. I'm going to be handed over to the chief priest. They're going to put me to death. Peter says, oh, no, 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 no. And Jesus has to say, get behind me, Satan. Peter, who denies Jesus three times in the last hours of Jesus' life. Or others of the apostles. We, we know Thomas. We call him Doubting Thomas. You know, the problem with Thomas wasn't that he doubted. The problem was he missed church. I mean, think about it. The first time Jesus appeared to the twelve after the resurrection, who was not there? Thomas. They all say, wow, we saw him. He's alive. And Thomas says, I'm not believing it until he sees him, right? And then he says, my Lord and my God. So the problem wasn't he doubted. The problem was he missed church. They all doubted till the first time they saw him. Relationship based on love and trust. That's what it takes. That's the only kind of relationship that can satisfy. Notice the word that jumps off the page in Peter's words in verses 8 and 9. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Joy. Even in bad times, we're familiar with what Paul has to say in the book of Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I will say rejoice. And we can just repeat it again, I say rejoice. Again I say rejoice. Just rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Where was Paul when he wrote that letter? He's in prison. Doesn't know if he's going to live or die. But he can command joy. That's in the imperative imperative. That means Jesus, I mean Paul, is commanding Christians to be joyful. Think about that. If God can command it, then we can control it. We can choose to be joyful or we can choose not to be joyful. Billy Sunday said it this way, if you have no joy in religion, there's a leak in your Christianity somewhere. Joy Philippians 4.4, 4. it's a choice. You can choose to be joyful or you can choose to walk around like Eeyore all the time. The, you know, the, the, the world's just weighing you down. It's not automatic. It's a, it's a choice. Just like love is a choice. Joy is a choice. So Paul could say in Romans 12.12, 12, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, no matter what comes, good or bad, Faithful in prayer. And Horatio Spafford can write, When peace like a river attends my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say it is well with my soul. Stanley Jones, we mentioned him a couple of weeks ago, missionary to India. Somebody asked him why it was that he was always so cheerful. And he said, when I met Christ, I felt like I'd swallowed sunshine. 
Do you feel like you've swallowed sunshine? You see, you can love the one you've never seen. You can trust the one you cannot see. And it can give you a joy that is so immense that it takes you through all the difficulties, all the sorrows, all the troubles, all the, the disasters of life. If you got joy, pray with me. Father, help us to love the one we've never seen. Help us to trust the one that we do not see, but the evidence of whose presence we can see all around us. And Father,